I love this song. It's one of the only songs on the Rumours album that has writing credits from all five members and it's fascinating how it all came together. I'm not actually sure why it says the dance. Maybe it used to be called that. Let me know if you know in the comments. I don't want to go into the amazing harmony section because it starts with such a punch, but this intro is really, really interesting. First of all, I love how it creates a kind of soundscape, a, a landscape almost, for the song to sit within. It reminds me of Appalachian America and brings me straight into that zone before the song has even started. But when the guitar hits, this is actually not originally this song. That guitar riff is from a song called Lola My Love which was on Buckingham and Nick's self-titled debut album. So this is the first little snippet that comes from a place, an unexpected place. I love how the high end twinkles in there as well. It's like wind chimes. It makes it feel magical, right? Here we go. It gives me shivers every time that. <laughs> love this harmony section because one, it's in basic thirds so it has that really close harmony feel but mostly they are matching everything. Even little nuances like the slides on damn your love, damn your lies. It's so nuanced and everyone is doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, so listen to the all really dead on wind blow. Scoop all at the same time. Watch the sun rise. It's just amazing how much that phrasing is so together, so tight, every little bit, and it feels like a very natural phrasing. I think that's what's extra surprising about it, but at this point, they all know exactly what they want it to be. I love how they punch the d on damn. I love how he's doing the little falls off the end of the notes. Never love me again. And he's got that huskiness to his tone that makes you feel like it's really, really authentic to him. Now these lyrics are written by Stevie Nicks and it was, of course, to do with the relationship between Stevie Nicks and Lizzie Buckingham and that must have been quite difficult to deal with, but some of the greatest songs are born out of collaborative processes and compromise between these amazing people and this is it. These chords were originally from a song called Keep Me There which is a Christine McVie song and John McVie worked on the bass line and of course Mick worked on the drums. Stevie Nicks wrote the lyrics to this so that is where she comes in. So this song really does take little parts of each of their own solo lives to make something that sings in actual harmony. <laughs> Oh, I love that as well. Yeah. And the call and response. 
so much to talk about. What I love about this is the rhythm on And if you don't love That is dead on the rhythm, the first one The second one I will never love Just before the beat Never love me again To me, that is almost the rhythmic version of Cry It's that I'm jumping in with emotion a little bit before the beat a little bit early Especially he's actually adding Cry Or actually Sob Which is kind of like a like a puppy noise love me again it scoops it slides it sobs and it's just before the beat so to me that's the ultimate emotional moment i also love how it's in unison and then it becomes a call and response call and responses are a usual technical term people use it a lot in songwriting but here what i love about it and what makes it really different is the call and response comes out of the unison in the melody so they sing the melody all together and then it kind of breaks out of that, breaks out of the chain, I guess, and it becomes a call and response, which gives it this driving energy and it's kind of a musical metaphor at the same time. Oh, I love that little end bit on the end there. Great. That's Stevie Nicks. That's really interesting how they had the really tight harmony the first time and they've got those little end additions on the long notes, just that little bit of extra expression and grit, which feels really truthful and also just allows that emotion to break through out of that amazing structure that they've built. There he goes, holding it on a little bit longer. It's so purposeful. Break the silence, down the dark, down the light. Ah, both of them that time, love it. <laughs> I can't feel the feel. Break, never break these. Okay. He's allowing his voice to crack as if he is so emotional in that chorus and it's so good. I'm loving the build up of emotion in their vocals. That first harmony section was so together, that verse was emotional with the slides on the end but now it's getting more and more they're adding these gritty additions into the harmony and i think we're about to hear it as well a little adaption to the melody to give it lift again and of course we're gonna come up to mwah, the most iconic bass line ever thank you john McVie. <laughs> That feels so authentic. I have got to admit, I don't know if it is 100% the, the most gentle on his vocal cords, but boy, does it feel real. One of the things about Fleetwood Mac, although there was a lot of issues within the band, so I've heard that they all felt like the band was bigger than any one individual. So they were willing to work together and it was more important to them. They found more joy in working together than 
moving apart and living within those disputes, which is really, really lovely to hear. And if they can process their emotions through this, through a bit of sublimation, then I think that's a pretty good way to do it without hurting other people. Now, the baseline up till now has been medianly simple, it's really driving, those drums complement it perfectly and it really fits together so you have this driving energy throughout but we're about to hear one of the most iconic bass lines of all time, it's used on loads and loads of sports adverts, I think it's used on the football here in the UK and before before this point the bass line's kind of anchoring the song and weighing it down and the drums are but here it starts to move forward and give it energy and drive. You'll see what I mean. Get ready. Is it nice? Look, that build. It's like the rising of tension, right? And then in the release, the guitar release of all those emotions. Actually, very similar to what I said in, when I was listening to Comfortably Numb, the guitar speaks when the emotions and the feeling goes beyond what language can hold. It feels like this is that tension of emotion that can only be expressed through music and sound and maybe art as well, maybe painting. And the interesting thing about this, in the original recording, because they had all written separate parts together, all the instruments were recorded separately and they had to kind of splice it together afterwards. and. It's so strange because this song just feels like such a complete amazing piece, yet it's a patchwork quilt. It makes me want a headbang, like I'm listening to metal. Amazing. That end, he's not worrying about it being beautiful singing, he's just being authentic and emotional and making the noises that feel best in that moment. And it feels so wonderful and so authentic to listen to. Before you go, I have just released my very own album, Fable. It's available on my website, bethroars.com and it has a bit of celtic -y vibes. There are a few songs here on YouTube and I would love if you could go and check it out. I'm really proud of it. Thank you for watching. If you liked, please do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.